This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner of the 100 bucks is Jose Avila. He is a 17-year-old that doesn't want to go to college and he wants to start his own business. For your chance to win 100 bucks, just like Jose, every Monday morning, simply subscribe to this podcast on iTunes right now and then text the word Nathan to 33444 to prove that you did it. Folks, many of you reach out to me and you say, Nathan, so many guests on your show talk about the importance of batching. But whenever I try and batch, you tell me this. You go, Nathan, they don't book back-to-back -back times. So you, or they don't show up after they book. It's frustrating. The answer is, guys, you have to use smart tools. I use a tool called Acuity Scheduling at NathanLatka.com forward slash schedule. I'll tell you specifically how I use it later on in the episode. Nathan Latke here. This is episode 609, and coming up tomorrow morning, you'll learn from Ryan Buckley. He's the CEO of Scripted and Twofer, which just hit 100 active customers paying 180 bucks monthly to get better, more accurate email leads. Good morning, everybody. Nathan Latke here, and our guest this morning is Craig Fitzpatrick. He is a serial entrepreneur, self-professed child nerd, and founder and CEO of a company called PageCloud. Craig, are you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. Let's do this. Good. So tell us, what does PageCloud do and how do you generate revenue? Well, PageCloud is a subscription service for an application that we believe is going to basically fix the experience of creating a website and putting it online. This is something that everyone can relate to. We've all tried to do this at various times in our lives, but it's been horribly broken for the last 15 or 20 years. It's taken way too much technology to do something which should be, in theory, relatively simple. So, Craig, should people be thinking here like this is a in the Squarespace, Weebly, Wix, WordPress-ish kind of space? That's definitely the world that we play in. I mean, all of these companies are 10 or 12-year-old, you know, billion-dollar companies. They, they did a tremendous thing in their day, uh, but it's time for that next big evolution. And we're ready to sort of pick up the ball and carry it the next leg um, out of the hands of those that are pretty technically literate into the hands of like everybody else. Yeah, so so we haven't seen a lot of evolution in this space, to be honest with you. So so where are you breaking through? What are you doing differently? Well, one of the big things is that most players in this space um, are predicated on something I call a template system, which is this idea that you can shop around on a theme forest or something and find a pre-built design that looks pretty close to what you want, maybe 60 or 70 percent. Um, and you feel really good when you do that because you can get something up and running. The problem is, um, I don't know about you, but 60 or 70% of what I want is never good enough for me. And all of this previous generation of tools leave you kind of stuck there. You don't really have the ability to push things around, you know, drag and drop, do everything that you could do on the desktop, for example, to truly personalize it. You're just kind of stuck with the template. And by contrast, PageCloud has really reinvented this experience of desktop publishing and put it right in your browser. So I, I kid you not, you literally go new page, new tab, you can create something from scratch by dragging or pasting something in, and when you hit save, that be live on the web, and all of the technology is taken care of for you. This is a radically different experience. And Craig, how many, so we'll for, let's go back and get some story here. Before we do that though, uh, what do people pay for this on average per month? It's $24 US per month per site. Okay. And if you average, just because I don't want to get into one site, two sites, five sites, et cetera, if you just average across your entire customer race, is it about $24 ARPU? Um, it'd be a little higher. We seem to have about a 1.1 1 .1 or a 1.2 sites per okay. person. So call it 28 bucks, something like that. Something, something like that, yeah. Okay. And then take us back from a historical perspective. What year did you launch the company in? Well, the company opened its doors in September 2014. Uh, I had actually started the project as a hobby in my spare time, evenings and weekends, uh, with a bottle of red wine at my side. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I've been um, I've been writing code since I was nine years old, so I have a deep technical background. But for most of my career, I've been more uh, active on the business side of things, and I I hadn't written code in ten years before PageCloud. But uh, I was frustrated, like everybody else out there. I was running a company at the time, and. We used WordPress, and every time we wanted to make a little change on a website, we just want to, have to pull our hair out. 
because it was so frustratingly difficult to even move an image one inch to the right, for example. And so I thought to myself, we've solved this problem before on the desktop. You know, I've been around since the invention of uh, graphical user interfaces and the invention of desktop publishing. And so I've watched the industry evolve. And for some reason, I, I saw the web publishing industry kind of stuck in the mud for about 10 years with not a lot of evolution. So I, I, I kid you not, it started off real simple. I opened up my browser and I wrote a few lines and I thought, if I could just have like a red box in a browser window and drag that box one inch to the right, let me just see if I could do that. And so I did, and I thought, oh, okay, well, let's see if I can write a little bit more code and maybe rotate it a little bit like you can do on the desktop. And two and a half years later, lots of evenings and weekends, I had a prototype of this experience that I was aiming for. And I was uh, winding down a company uh, around that time that the team, unfortunately, was being laid off. It just, the company didn't work. Was, it, was, was it your company? Out. Was that a, a kind of a, a failed it, startup story? Uh, it, it wasn't mine. I wasn't a founder. I was uh, head of product development, but it was a friend of mine's company. I see. And we, it, we gave it a five-year kick, you know, and it just, it was a social marketing uh, market, which pretty much was born and was over owned within five years. Um, it's the fastest market development I've ever seen. Which one was it? Um, um, the company, it's a company you, you've never heard of. It's called Source Metrics, but uh, it was a social marketing uh, tool category. Oh, so gosh. Things like, uh, you know, not sorry. Not this is like Evolver, um, Buddy Media, Wildfire, et cetera. Hootsuite, yeah. I mean, Hootsuite kind of cleaned up in that area, as far as we can tell. Yep. Um, yep. And okay, so I was trying to figure out if I should go get a real job for once in my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I started showing people this thing, and it just kind of took off from there. And now fast forward a little bit. So how, what's the team size to date? Uh, I think we're over the 25 person mark. We've just hired a few, so I've kind of lost count. Oh, nice. When were you based? Ottawa, Canada. Oh, oh, very good. Man, booming up there. There's a lot of startups, huh? It's doing really well, yeah. I've seen this go through a couple 10-year cycles, but uh, things are at kind of peaking right now, too. And uh, self-funded or have you raised capital? No, we're pretty well funded. Um, that's one of the mistakes I made earlier as an entrepreneur uh, is undercapitalizing. And um, this time I thought there's no way we're going to make that mistake. And so in the last two years, we actually raised four uh, small to mid-sized rounds of financing. Okay. Um, so, we're, yeah, we sort of took that risk right off the table. And to what's, if you add it all up, what's total? How much have you raised? Uh, we've done 11 and a half Canadian, uh, 11 and a half million. So what's that, sort of eight and a half U.S. or something like that? Okay, interesting. And were those all, uh, have you done a priced round, a priced equity round, or were those all convertible note? Uh, they all started off the first three were convertible notes and then the fourth round priced it off. Priced. That's great. That's really yeah. great. Okay, yeah. so 2014 was launch date, 25 people now up there in Ottawa, got about 8.5 million USD raised. And how many customers are you serving now in Q1 2017? Uh, we're around 8,000, maybe 8,500. Wow, that's, that's great. Approximately, uh, yeah, it's 100 or so countries worldwide. That's um, amazing. And, and, and even though the company is a little over two years old, we've actually only been in market for one year. Because the first year was our R&D year. Well, I mean, so Craig, can I do the math? Can I take 8,400 customers times the ARPU of 28 and assume you're doing around 230 grand per month in revenue? Uh, not quite. Some of the early customers were deep discounted. Okay. Because uh, we ran uh, something that was like a Kickstarter campaign, although it wasn't on the Kickstarter platform. But the concept was similar. It was, you know, here's a deep discount. Give us a try. We'll promise you early access. You get your founder member status, et cetera. And that thing, I tell you, with gangbusters, it was huh. one of the most successful SaaS pre-order campaigns in history. Uh, we pre-sold $1.2 million US what? in life before launch day. What's, have you written about this anywhere so I can go study it? Uh, I have not. I've told the story a few times, but I uh, haven't put pen to paper. Okay, well, tell us, educate us a little bit. Well, first off, on the revenue there. So are you closer to 200 grand per month right now or below 200? Uh, I, I, below 200, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. uh, but above, uh, I was going to say above 100. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the to... first licenses were two-thirds discounted, so that's a good big... Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's helpful. All right, um, okay, take us back to that story. So, so I mean, what was it form factor-wise? You took them to a website, and, and how'd you pre-sell? Well, you know, um, so we were lucky enough to be TechCrunch uh, finalists in let's see spring of 2015 i think mm -hmm. or four, uh, yeah 2015 um and so one of the greatest things that happened out of that wasn't even the TechCrunch crunch fair because you know they'll write about you and you'll get kind of a pop of traffic for three days and then it all disappears but we got this awesome promotional video because the stage uh, demonstration was of the right length you know it was like five minutes plus two minutes of questions 
It was professionally recorded. It kind of had this very Steve Jobs on stage feel to it because that's how they encourage you to be. And it turns out, you know, this just turned out to be a great demo video. So we built a little landing site around that. And then um, my marketing manager at the time and I said, well, we sort of knew that you shouldn't start marketing a product when you're ready to ship the product. That's way too late. Um, I've made that mistake before as an entrepreneur. And I realize now that you start marketing six months before launch. Um, as an old marketing contact or advisor of mine used to say, if you're going to make a splash, make sure people are standing around the pool yep. first. And so there's just a whole bunch of marketing work to do to get ready for a launch. Things like testing channels, testing audience, testing messaging, et cetera. And it's kind of like R&D. And so we wanted to do that. And we said, okay, so what, the way we're going to do that is we're going to work pre-sale campaign. We're going to flash the price on the product. We've got this awesome demo video. We're going to do a landing site. We're going to start taking credit cards. We're going to throw in a few goodies to help in, in like entice what? people. Um, early access, uh, insider information, um, frankly, founder member status. And the, the magic of something like a Kickstarter, i got to give them credit, um, is this idea of people supporting people. So sometimes people will just say, you know what? We were selling something for 99 bucks. Not a lot of money. And they'd say, I like the concept of this. I may use it. I may not, but here we go. Let's, let's support them. So what was your price uh, point to get all the early stuff on the landing page? What'd they pay? It was 99 bucks for the year, which is just over eight bucks a month. So and we two thirds discounted it. And how many did you sell? Uh, the exact number I forget to be like eight to 10,000 units, I think, or something wow. like that. How did you get all that traffic yeah. to it? <laughs> well, it, it, it's, um, I wish I could say it was a master plan. We, we did really well. We learned along the way. The first month we spent something like $5,000 in Facebook ads. It's just to see what would happen. And that month we got $10,000 back in cash. And so we thought, Hey, that's great. We doubled our marketing money. Let's do $20,000 next month. And we got $80,000 back a four to one ratio. So at the, we, we were just pumping as much money through Facebook and a few other platforms as we possibly could Fascinating. getting all this cash back. Yeah. And, and, and even better, like we got to learn about things like how do these different channels work? You know, like Google AdWords is very different than Facebook, it's very different than SEM. And so we learned the nuances of that. We got to learn what kind of messaging works better. We got to manage our click through rates and, and so forth. So we really learned how to market in that six month period. That is fascinating. Interesting. So you just, there was a buy now button on that page under your demo video and it said buy here to get in early at a discount and boom, that was it. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. How many views did the video get? Oh man, we pumped probably a million bucks in advertising spend that year. And that thing has been seen by over 200 million people worldwide. You pumped a million bucks into ads that first year. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Yeah, our biggest month, we spent a quarter of a million bucks in Facebook ads. My Lord. And did you get the, was the payback period immediate? Uh, pretty much, yeah, within 30 days. Yeah. So you were because selling only annual we, plans. Exactly, which is great for front-loading cash. Yeah. Now, our, so let's get into some other unit economics here. What's your gross customer return, especially those annual ones that had to renew at 99 um, so it started off really high. I think like it always does. Like our first month in market, it was something like 50% churn for the monthly cohort. Yeah. And it came down 10% a month for the next four months. Uh, we got it down to like 16% or something like that. And then, or no, sorry, we got it down to 12. We thought we were doing pretty good. And then it pops back up to 16 and I just stopped the prices, shut the entire company down and said, stop what you're doing, fix this. <laughs> So we launched a bunch of programs and we got it back down to resume its downward trend. And uh, where we're at now coming into 2017 is, is pretty healthy rates for just being a, a, a year and a quarter into market. And by the end of this year, I'm hopeful that we're going to hit sort of industry. What do you got now? So when I say industry, um, so it's bouncing around anywhere between six and seven percent. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're also in the ARPU range yeah. in the small business space where like it's just tough. Like it, small businesses go out of business. Yeah, it is tough. I think the industry says that a percent or two of, of your churn is always going to be attributable just to that alone. Well, yeah, if not more. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I've seen stories where it's much higher than that in this space. Yeah. Um, cool. See, the I mean, good thing is, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, well, so we have a few minutes left, so I'm going to sneak in some last questions here. What's it cost you to acquire a new customer? What's your CAC? Uh, that company's is around a lot, too. It's, uh, I'm trying to think of the last measurement. I think it's around 300, okay. 300 bucks. Something like that. That's yeah. great. And so if we get you, someone for four years, then it, 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 it's quite lucrative. What do you, what do you forecast in terms of your lifetime value for a customer? Um, we've had it get up to around the thousand dollar mark. Okay. 
So, um, yeah, we'll be pushing a good um, CAC to LTV ratio. Yeah. Yeah, but, well, if you have a six percent though monthly churn, one divided by six means they're going to stay, or point six means they're going to stay with you for about what seventeen months times your twenty eight dollar ARPU gives you about a three hundred dollar LTV, right? Uh, that's just on the monthly, so yeah. So the so the annual churn is much lower, and we've got actually it. got a really nice split. Um, it bounces around like everything, but recently it's around thirty five, forty percent of our customers are annual, so got that'll it. drag the, the overall. Uh, in the right direction. And, and what's your goal? So 2017 total revenue, what goal would make you really happy if you break it? Um, I'd say, yeah, I'd be really happy if we hit say two and a half million annualized. Got it. So call it 190 K in MRR by December, 2016. Exactly. Yeah. I'd be That's pretty great. happy camper. Awesome. Yeah. All right. You'll be drinking lots of red wine. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, I get asked all the time, Nathan, you post all these interviews, hundreds of them per month. How do you do them efficiently? And guys, the answer is simple. People always agree to my calendar, back-to-back meetings. I batch my interviews to stay very efficient. And the way that I do it is I use a tool called Acuity Scheduling at NathanLatka.com forward slash schedule. And the reason I use them is very simple. They keep my no-show rate very low because they send out reminders about when the interview or the meeting is coming up. And also, they make it very easy to schedule time, right? I don't have to go back and forth via email 10,000 times with people I'm trying to meet with. Okay, at NathanLatka.com forward slash schedule. It helps me so much. And by the way, look, I like have so many meetings. I'm the best at meetings, okay? I do them back to back very, very efficient. You guys know me. Many people say I'm the most efficient they've ever seen. Okay, so I use the tool. It's so efficient. And by the way, I got Gavin. I said, Gavin, he's the CEO. I said, I want a great deal for my people. He said, Nathan, well, most people get a 14-day trial. Isn't that great? I said, no. He's given us a 45-day free trial at NathanLatka.com forward slash schedule. That's not going to stay up forever, so go get it now. NathanLatka.com forward slash schedule. All right, Craig, let's wrap up with the famous five number one. What's your favorite business book? Oh, God. Well, actually, it was the biography of Steve Jobs. Yep. Um, num- just fascinating stories and character. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, right now, no, but I would say Steve again. And it was, it was just his ability to um, inspire people that I've always tried to uh, mimic, let's say. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have besides your own? <laughs> hmm, good question. Uh I can't think of one, honestly. <laughs> okay. Number four, yes or no, do you get eight hours of sleep every night? Um, I try, but it's a struggle. Got Seven it. It's probably more realistic. And yeah. what's your situation? Married, single, do you have kids? Uh, officially single, although, you know, um, recently started dating someone. Great. So no, no kids yet? No kids. All right. And how old are you? I'm 43. 43. Okay. Take us back 23 years. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> putting me on the spot there. I don't know. I, I gotta, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with everything that's turned out so far. For a 20 year old listener right now, what do you wish they knew? Like, give them a lesson. Oh, um, I don't know. There's no time like the present to start. Uh, this whole entrepreneurial thing, not magic. It's not mystery. Um, we all learn as we go. So jump in while you've got nothing to lose. No big house, you know, payment, car payment, wife, kids. Just do it and learn along the way. Guys, there you have it from Craig, founder of PageCloud back in 2014. There's no time better than right now to start. He has since scaled up to about 8,400, 8,500 paying customers, paying on average between 18 and 28 bucks a month, doing somewhere around 150 grand in monthly recurring revenue, 6% gross churn, spending about 300 bucks on customer acquisition costs with an LTV somewhere between 600 and a grand, depending on if they're annual or monthly folks. Again, their team of 25 trying to really usher in a new era of fully customized website building. Craig, thank you for taking us to the top. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. If you enjoyed Craig today, go back and listen to Matt's horn yesterday. He's the CEO of TeenyTel, which has raised $4 million and has shipped over 15,000 units of a watch that actually makes phone calls. There's really no phone needed. You literally go in the woods with just this watch and you can make phone calls. The technology will really impress you. Tune in to find out what it is. Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. 
How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money. HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Okay, Top Tribe, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, before you listen to any other episodes, subscribe on iTunes right now for your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday. 